Hey garden friends. Hi. I'm actually watching two sweet little fawns out in my front yard. I'm not sure where their mother is at the moment. Oh, they're very cute. They're now they're running, running further away. They're so cute when they're little. It has been a uh, interesting fawn season. I been, have been biking around my neighborhood the last three months. So I've kind of gotten to know which herds of deer are where and where I can always anticipate them and just about how many uh, fawns I'll see. And you can tell like some of the older ones versus the newer ones that are younger by, I don't know, a few weeks, I guess. And it's just really kind of fun to say, to see. I actually recorded an episode earlier this week and then I went to edit it this evening. It's Friday, July 3rd as I'm sitting here and I didn't, I didn't like listening to it. So I'm re redoing that uh, episode today. Um, it's been two weeks since I put out an episode. It was, I've been extremely busy with work the last couple of weeks and honestly my focus has been <laughs> just trying to stay sane and and producing a podcast last week was just not going to happen. It just was not was not interested in recording and trying to edit and do all of that. So with that, I just let you know that I may be a little bit more uh, between episodes for the next few weeks, and I kind of feel silly, you know, stopping calling these the Quarantine Garden Chronicles just because. As, as everyone is probably well aware that, you know, many, many states are seeing an uptick in numbers because of, you know, reopening and no mask wearing and all of that good stuff. So here in Texas, it's pretty, pretty bad. It's not as bad as Florida is being bad at the moment. And specifically Harris County, which is Houston, is extremely bad, but as is all of the major cities here. So. And we just got a mandatory mask order, which I am, can't believe, <laughs> to be honest. So lots of things are going down right now. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm in the same boat as everybody else, trying to figure out what's, what's on the agenda for the next month, two months, six months. I mean, I'm a person who usually likes to plan pretty well out into the future. I feel like the last, one of the last few times that I felt this disoriented was probably after I graduated college. I didn't know, all I knew was I was moving to Florida because that's where my, my husband, my soon to be husband at that point was, but I didn't know where I was going to work. I didn't know what I was going to do. And all of that was up in the air. And as somebody who, I don't know, likes to have a plan, we usually have something on the agenda several months out you know, whether it's camping or a visit to family or friends, there's always something and now there's nothing. And I know, I know so many people are dealing with the similar things and or many much worse because they don't have jobs. But, you know, that's part of the, part of the problem right now is just trying to figure out what's, what's going on. And then obviously my son's going to kindergarten next year and figure out all that, um, but I guess at the same time, you know, to bring this back to gardening, <laughs> I'd like to say that gardening is an oasis a little bit for me, and it is. I'm very, very, I'm extremely thank thankful that we have the space that we have. I can't imagine folks without this kind of space to be able to escape to if they wanted. So being able to come to the garden or just sit in the backyard or go in my pond and and read a book or it's, it's pretty much it's been a very good thing for for us for this quarantine and I'm gonna have to <laughs> probably keep enjoying that even more and be thankful for that even for even longer um, because we're, we're also, because of the increased cases we're not hiking as much for the next few weeks to the month it's not that we can't hike mostly we're just concerned about you know, accidents and having to be in the hospital when hospitals are already full. So rather err on the side of caution on that end. So it's, it's enjoying our garden with all the frustrations that goes with it. And my husband was <laughs> mentioning the other day, he's like, 
I just want to spend a day going to this nursery and that nursery and, and going to all these nurseries. I'm like, yeah, me too. <laughs> I I would love to just spend a weekend, you know, maybe even just get a hotel in town and make it our, our spot and go to the nurseries that are an hour and a half away on the south side of Houston and then on the way home, hail hey, the ones up the side. And, you know, it's going to be a while for us. Um... Maybe, maybe if numbers come down, we can feel comfortable just being outside at a nursery and around folks. But for us, that's not the case. I don't know. I don't know what everybody else feels comfortable with. And honestly, that's something I'm kind of grappling with. Uh, just seeing folks post on Instagram, uh, their, their interpretations of what they're comfortable with. And, you know, mine are usually vastly different. I'll just, I'll just say that. So enough COVID, I guess, for the moment. Uh, the garden is, is, I don't know, it's July. We had a great amount of rain last week for about three or four days, which is, which was great. Everything needed a good soaking, but now we're back to eh, kind of drying up I think a little bit again. Out in the edible garden, blackberries are pretty much done. I'm still getting lots of green beans, cucumbers out my ears. I actually made pickles. This is what I want to talk about those pickles. I have my grandmother's recipe, my maternal grandmother, and um, I made a batch of pickles last weekend and I opened one of the jars up that I put in the fridge just to see if they were ready today and they were, they were perfect and you know opening, opening that jar, I might cry a little here, <laughs> uh, definitely reminded me so much of my grandmother. It was like opening <laughs> a little hug from her um, she passed away in 2013 and, you know, she was, she was, definitely, she was the gardener of the family. Uh, her, her downfall ended up happening, I think in 2007 or eight, I can't remember exactly. And by, she was still living alone at that time and she was in, she lived next door to actually one of her brothers and his wife and uh, let's see at that point she was sometime in her, somewhere in her mid 70s I think and she was out in her yard and happened to fall, I don't know, I can't recall the details if she just fell or she got some sunstroke or something like that but she was spent many hours laying in her yard um, before somebody was able to help her and that but that was pretty much the down downward trend for her after uh, spending some time in some rehab facilities and then uh, eventually moving to a like senior apartment kind of complex and then you know a after a while she ended up at a at a nursing home facility and then and things just went downhill from there but um, but yeah she was the gardener in my family and you know there's an episode, one of the first ones I talked with my mom about, <laughs> I didn't even know this was where this episode was going to go today, <laughs> um, but I was laying on my couch thinking about those pickles and thinking about, it would be great to have a hug from her. <laughs> so opening up those pickles was like that. <laughs> and there's so many other foods I wish I could replicate of hers. I mean, it's great cheesy potatoes. I mean, <laughs> it's just like Velveeta and, you know, potatoes and milk and, I don't know, magic and her fried chicken. But just thinking of all the things she grew in her vegetable garden and all the things she put away and all the work she did to it because, she, I mean, she lived off of her garden, a lot of it. Um, so, I don't know, I don't even know where I'm going with this, but I was just thinking about that. And I know so many of us have family members who have given us this gardening gene, I guess you could call it. And there's plenty more who, who are the beginning of the gardening gene. You may be the first person in your, in your family that has <laughs> been interested in gardening. I don't know, but I think it has an impact on all of us. 
in some manner, whether we're just interested in collecting, you know, cool monsteras <laughs> or whatever interesting trend is going on for houseplant enthusiasts today, or you have, you know, at one acre edible garden in your backyard that you're cultivating. Uh, it means a lot for us. I know it means probably doubly more for so many of us now that we are, you know, homebound to some extent. And, uh, I think, I think that's, <laughs> I think that's that for that little thought process there. But, it's important to share it. I, I, I've been very thankful. My son has been a little bit more enthused about the gardening lately. He's been wanting to plant seeds and grow plants. He actually grew pumpkins. I, I mentioned this a few, a few quarantine episodes ago that he started his own pumpkin vines and they're still in the pot <laughs> and we haven't planted them on the ground. So they're, they're not going to end up producing fruit, but we did put uh, I think I transplanted one of the others that did get started into the vegetable garden out there. So I'm hoping one of those produce a pumpkin for him so he can be proud of that. Um, and he calls, he calls one of the purple uh, green beans, uh, the uh, rare beans because they're purple. Uh, anything odd and different is, is rare and interesting to him. So it's really fun. and. One of the other, uh, he is an interesting kid. When he was like two or three, he loved dill. And I haven't grown dill in probably a couple seasons because I don't, I don't, couldn't tell you why. But he likes dill. And then I bought fennel really just to attract like black swallowtails uh, so I can have caterpillars. And uh, he's, he likes to eat the dill. I have this bronze fennel that I got actually last year has taken off really well and it's actually put on uh, a lot of uh, runners for the lack of a better word at the moment um, off of its main stem that I could actually break off and plant elsewhere but it is very healthy it looks great <laughs> year-round I mean it probably it probably looks worse for the wear in like December January but it bur bounces back really well but he loves going to get fennel and <laughs> we made little balls he wanted to make a recipe from something we harvested and I was you know you know we come in with all of my stuff from the garden and I was like evening time not in the mood to be putting away anything like that I'm not I'm not making pickles right now dude and I was like well you have fennel maybe we can find something edible some edible way to make this so his fennel balls were rolling up the fennel I got we got some salt and then seasoning called Everglaze seasoning. It's this uh, seasoning you can get in Florida uh, and uh, it's really just like a salt and pepper and other mixture of, of seasonings. Sprinkle a little bit on that and fennel balls and he, it was just amazing and he loved it and I don't know it's the little things like that that you pass to your kids. You know maybe he doesn't become a gardener but maybe he remembers I made fennel balls <laughs> and they were delicious uh, or the purple green beans were the rare beans and that's some story he tells his kids or whatever um so if you're gardening with kids or just enjoying nature or anything like that you never know what they're going to be picking up on and crying about <laughs> many years later uh when they get some memory come to them okay so this is it for this quarantine episode. I'm not sure what I'm going to title it for real. I'm watching the very tall over my head uh, frostweed bloom starting to bloom. Uh, looking at everything that's being devoured by deer <laughs> uh, and seeing my poor Mo Formosa lilies that I'm never going to get to see bloom again because the deer decided they like them. Gosh, they were so beautiful. And they would they would be blooming right now if uh, if the deer hadn't decided they like them anymore. Please stay safe. Please wear your mask. Um, get some gardening in, some nature time in. Spend some time uh, getting your hands dirty in the next week or so. Until next time. <laughs>